Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to talk about NGRX runtime checks. So what are runtime checks and why are they useful? Here is how runtime checks work. When we are in development mode, NGRX will add some extra functionality to the store services in order to ensure that we write our code respecting certain rules. For example, we have here the login reducer that handles here the login action. Reducers need to be written in a certain way. For example, here we have created here a new copy of the authentication state of our application and we have filled in here the user profile property. Now, this is the correct way of implementing this reducer because we are not mutating the original authentication state of our application. But we could have potentially written this reducer in an incorrect way. Let's say that, for example, instead of creating here a new object and adding here the user profile, we would instead access here the original authentication state, we would access here the user property and we would mutate that property directly by assigning it here the user profile contained in our login action. Then we would take the mutated authentication state and we would return it here directly in the output of our reducer. So if we would run this implementation of this reducer, it would look like everything is working correctly. However, this implementation of the login reducer is problematic for a couple of reasons. First, as we can imagine, this implementation breaks our time traveling debugger. So if we mutate directly the state, then we cannot go back to it. We don't have a snapshot to go back because that object has been mutated. Another important reason why this is problematic, it's because this would break on push change detection in case that we would be using it in our application. So on push change detection is a special angular change detection mode that we are going to cover at the end of this course that allows our application to get the view updated in a more performant way, assuming that the data does not get mutated and that we push each time new versions of the data to the view. So if we mutate directly the data inside the store, we would break that guarantee and our application, if running under on push change detection, would break. So as you can see, mutating directly the state like we are doing here is problematic and we would like to find some way of accidentally doing this while developing our application. So we can turn on here a runtime check using here the configuration of NGRX store. Let's have a look at the configuration. In this configuration object, we have here a runtime checks property, which is going to take here several other properties, which is going to allow us to configure several different types of runtime checks. So here we are going to choose the strict state immutability check and we're going to turn it to true. So with this development check on, we are making sure that the state in our store is never accidentally mutated by our application code. And this includes the reducers and any other application code that might accidentally try to mutate directly the state. Let's see how this works in practice. We are going to reload here our application and we are going to try to perform a login. So before the login was working perfectly, but now when our application refreshes and tries to save the user profile in the store, we get here an error, cannot assign to read only property user of this object. So we are going to confirm that this is indeed getting triggered by the login action. Let's switch here to the application tab and let's simply remove all the keys from local storage. We are going to reload here our application and we are going to now see that we don't get any errors in the console. Let's then go ahead and trigger the login. So as you can see, it's indeed the login action that is causing this error. So what our runtime check did was to take the state inside the store that we can find here on the raw view, for example. So this JavaScript object here with a couple of properties, this is the store state. So our runtime check takes the state of the store and makes it immutable. 
This means that our reducers cannot accidentally modify the store state anymore. And not only our reducers, but nothing in our application, the components, the services, nothing can change the store state anymore. Whatever comes out of the store is immutable and it cannot be mutated. And if we try to mutate it, we are going to get this error saying that a given read-only property of an object cannot be assigned. So this is a sign that the object is frozen and cannot be further modified. Let's now fix the implementation of our reducer and see that everything is still working correctly. We are going to roll back here the implementation and we are going to put back in place this correct version of the reducer, which is creating here a new version of the authentication state instead of mutating the existing object. Let's now try this out. We are going to switch to a larger window and we are going to perform login again. And this time around, everything is working again as expected. So as you can see, this runtime check that we have added here has prevented us from accidentally writing our reducer in an incorrect way. So as you can see, this functionality is very useful in order to avoid introducing bugs in our application that will be later hard to troubleshoot. Besides the strict state immutability runtime check, we have also here available three other runtime checks. So let's start with strict action immutability. This runtime check is going to ensure that our actions cannot be mutated either. So if we want to have our time traveling debugger working and all our dev tools working correctly in general, it's important that our code does not accidentally mutate the action objects either. So an action is a way for us to communicate with the store, for example, to report that an event has happened to the store. There is really no good reason for why the store would like to modify the action object. Modifying the action object would accidentally break our time traveling debugger, so we want to make sure that we turn this runtime check on in order to avoid this type of problems. Next, we have a couple of other runtime checks. Let's start with the strict action serializability runtime check that we are also going to turn on to true. So what does this do? This ensures that our actions are serializable. For example, if our action would include a date object, it would break this check because dates are not serializable in JavaScript. This ensures that the actions can be saved by the dev tool so that they can be replayed later on if needed. So again, an important check to turn on. Another runtime check that we recommend to also turn on is the strict state serializability runtime check. So this ensures that the state inside the store is always serializable. This can be useful for certain use cases, such as for example, if we want to store the state of the store locally, let's say in local storage, like we were doing with the authentication module, and we would like to keep the state there so that we can recover it later on. I recommend that you make sure that all these runtime checks are active and notice that depending on your NGRX version, maybe some of the checks are already active. Here I am turning them on all explicitly so that we can see that they are all active. And with this, we have covered all four runtime checks. Let's now take a moment to introduce a new concept. We are going to talk about meta reducers. So with that, we will have all our development tools set up and we will be ready for the next phase of our course where we are going to start to load course data into the store using NGRX entity.